Amen. first.
the act of using something to find out whether it works correctly or how effective it is. Hmm. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, man. Mm -hmm. How effective it is. it is. Test. In my digging, I also found out that it says life situations to evaluate man's individual obedience to the law of his own faith. Faith. Hmm. Hmm. How effective is it? To each his own, right? Uh -huh. Then you have trial and tribulation. By word of definition, it is the difficult experience or problem, a test of one's patience hmm. and or endurance. Mm -hmm. The act of process of testing, trying, or putting proof to one's faith mm -hmm. to stand, endure the pressure. Mm -hmm. What is, okay, you, you, you did all that to say what? Hmm. It all falls back down to how little or how big our faith is. Uh -huh. We are tested. We are put through trial. We are put through tribulation. Why? Because we need to see how effective our own faith is working. Mm -hmm. Ooh. All right, now. Do we have a mustard seed faith? A grape seed faith? Or do we ain't got no faith at all? Uh oh. See, come on. <laughs> that's the question. That's, that's a big question. And that's that's something that you gotta look within your own self. Right there. Because can't nobody answer that but you. Right there. And I when I'm when I'm studying, when I'm going through some stuff, when I need to find some answers, I find stuff in song. That's that's how the Lord deals with me. Mm -hmm. And a couple of songs that I found out, and it, it made me laugh, it tickled my fancy. One that my great grandparents loved <laughs> so much was I'm Coming Up oh, on the Rough Side of the Mountain. Of the, mountain. Ooh. Yeah. the other one that came by and put back to my remembrance <laughs> when I was little was this song that said, I Told the Storm to Pass. Uh -oh. yeah. Storm, you won't pass. And then there's another one that's real catchy. And it says, weeping may endure for a night, but you Now see, all of them little songs are talking about a little bit of faith. Uh -huh. When you're coming up on the rough side of your mountain, do you have the faith to know that you're going to make it there? Come on. You're going to get to the other side? All right. When you told that storm to pass, do you really have the faith to believe that it's really going to go Come away? All right, man. Do you really have the faith to know that your weeping may endure to just for a little bit? Uh -huh. But that joy is on the way. I don't know. Because the way we be going around here, we. We say a lot of stuff, but then we act and do something uh, completely different. Uh, don't look at your neighbor. Uh, look down uh, on the floor at your shoes. Don't look around. Uh, uh, come on. Don't do that. Come on. There we go. Okay. Every test is not to break you. All right now. Every yeah. test is not to keep you down. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's a learning mechanism. It's, the, it's a strength builder. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. It's a chance to exercise your faith. Mm -hmm. right it becomes proof so you know now and will have a testimony. Your test is uh -oh. when you're coming out of that stuff. That test, that storm, now becomes a great testimony that you can go now and tell somebody else just how big your God is, uh, which in return exercises your own. Look it up. Look it up. Yes. Look it up. Mm. If you got some. Look it up. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's, that's a, again, that's a personal. Uh -huh. Something you need to figure out for yourself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Look it up. Yeah. But guess what? At the end of all of that, mm -hmm. it says, you're going to give your praise. Uh 
Now, you don't have a choice. You got to give him praise at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. But going through that storm, going through that test, going through that trial, that seemed like a hard thing to do. Say. And then, you know, we got some stuff that we do. We sit there and the first thing we do is lose our mind. Uh -oh. That little piece of test paper. Look, that thing looks so much bigger in your eye. Uh -huh. And then you sit there and you lose your mind over something really minute. Then you scream, you cry, you go in the shop, you make cuss and fuss. You forget who you are and who's y'all. You repeat some stuff. You do some stuff that's out your character. Uh -huh. Then you repeat the same little questions. Oh, why? Lord, why? Why me? Why? Oh, that is a big one. Why now? In this particular time? Because, you know, your storm may be financially, and you were doing real good, smooth and coasting. Then all of a sudden, bam, you got hit. Bank account empty. Lost your job. Now you sitting there like, well, why now at this particular time? And then, after you done did all of that, the second thing you go do is go in your messy books, your telephones, your tweet tweet page, and everything else that don't got no sense. <laughs> If you try to find some answers from anybody, somebody out there that's willing to look and hear you for that moment, guess what? Them people don't care about you. They out there just being as nosy as they want to be. Amen. Spreading your stuff. Because they like the gossip. And let me tell you another thing. They glad it's not them. Stop putting your business in my ear. I'm just saying. Stop that. Uh, next, you crumble. You completely crumble. Now you don't talk about yourself. You don't put it out there. Now stuff is going around, and it's not even the first thing that what you said. Way up the phone, telephone line. It start out good, but then it ends up something completely different. But then you now crumble because. Hmm, Nothing is what it seemed like. And then now you go back to the second phase. Why? What happened? I don't know. Oh my God. Jesus. Oh, now you want to call him. But for what reason? The wrong one. And then all of a sudden, somebody repeats that thing. Oh, baby. Nobody. God is not going to put nothing more on you than you can handle. You know what? That's real good, but let me tell you something. It's the pressure that you have to go through. And you cannot do anything by yourself. It's God. It's Jesus. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit that's got to help you Come through on. that thing. Come on. Come on. He can't. Good, good. He, he's not going to put more on me. No, because he's the one that's carrying you. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's helping you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Every time you feel like you're taking two steps and then all of a sudden you fall down, that's probably because somebody done picked you back up. Mm -hmm. it look, it, it, now you're looking around going, I see everything. Everything's in slow motion. Everything is just this way and that way. Huh. But while you're being carried, something miraculous is happening. Mm -hmm. Some things are starting to work out. Mm -hmm. Some things is going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me stop you right there. The next time that some of that stuff starts to happen, the first thing we need to do is remember something. As believers, we need to know first who we belong to. Mm -hmm. That's right. God said, if you just have faith as little as a mustard seed, and I don't know if you ever saw a mustard seed, but it's, it's like a pin drop. It's about as big and round as this. It is. Yeah, it is. It's really not that big. And he said, that's, that's, that's it. If you have just that much, we could move some mountains. Now, can you imagine if you have some great big old faith? You can take that big old red rock up that way or sleep mountain that way, what, black mountain, whichever. All those problems have seen that big. And it can, it can move. It can move. Then we have to try to remember something from James 1, 2, and 3. Come on. 
And it says, my brethren, count it all joy uh -huh. that when you fall into various trials, uh -huh. knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. We need to have patience to endure the pressure, to endure the storm, to endure the test, to endure the trial that we're going through. It's not about us. It was never about us. Mm. I'm calling him Paul. Uh -huh. Get down on your knees and pray. Come on. Stop looking for answers somewhere else you can't find them. Get down on your knees and pray. Yes. Uh -huh. Call the one that can do something. Call the one that'll stretch out his hand every single time. Call the one that never misses your cry. Call on the one that can do something. Because let me tell you, your money ain't going to get it. Huh. Your doctor can't write you enough prescriptions to get you ready. Your scheming and stuff ain't gonna get it, ain't gonna cut it. Your lawyer is not gonna be able to lie his way out of it for you. Your mama and daddy can do all the praying they want to, but they still can't help you. Your cousin and them ain't gonna be able to do nothing for you. Your pastor can pray for you, lay hands right on you, legislate, snot and everything, in this, but let me tell you, this still not going to help you. You have to do this thing on your own. You have to find that thing on the inside and then exercise it and get it out and put it forth up there. It's, it's not, if it lays dormant in you, what's it doing? You got to do something about it. Turn the key on. Uh -huh. Turn it on. Use it. Tell somebody about somebody about what you know that he can do. Uh oh. Say that three times fast. I can't. I can't either. When your back is against the wall, that's it. Put your hands up and say, Lord, I surrender everything to you. Lord, help me. Hear my cry, Lord. I'm in need of, I'm in need of your wings, Lord. Wrap me up. Jesus. Do something. Help me out here. Uh -huh. I can't do this thing all by myself. That's right. That's right. Please, Lord, help me. Mm. For God, nothing is possible. And let me tell you, I know that to be true. Four years ago, I'm laying in my bed of affliction. Come on. Over in Desert Springs Hospital. Come on. Can't move. Uh, can't see, just having that. issues, yeah. still having seizures. Uh, my mama doesn't know what's going on. My kids are sitting there crying. Yes, sir. They told me, well, months later, I'm still not walking. I still can't see, don't know what's going on with me. Uh, that, that's the 2001. Uh -huh. My mama's sitting right there. She telling you what so I'm laid up in sunrise. Uh -huh. With tubes coming from each way possible. Whatever hole you can think of, I had one in there. Plus one in my neck. In a coma for a week. Woke up, didn't know where I was. Right now. And they told me back then, you're not going to be able to walk no more. You ain't going to be able to talk no more. You ain't going to be able to rest no more. You ain't going to be able to chill You ain't going to be able to work no more. I ain't going to be able to sing no more. Wait a minute, hold up. Remind that story because let me tell you, each and every day that I was up in that hospital, there was some singing going on. I may not have been able to sing it real good, but that music was playing and I was humming and I was singing. And look at me today, baby, I can dance and sing. Don't tell me nothing possible for God. Don't sit there and tell me that your feet can activate.
nothing about it. Yeah. If it's just sitting there, you ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing. Turn the key. It's like a car. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 